Crown Produce secures produce locally and from around the world for Canadian retailers. Crown Produce is also proud to secure sponsorship of University Football on Shaw. Crown Produce, supporting Canadian retailers and Canadian amateur football. Whether it's your first home, a refinance, or an investment property, Kia Grant & Associates can find a mortgage solution for you. In association with Barrico Paragon, the work she does for you is free. Find her on Facebook at Kia Grant Mortgages. Legendary punk band DOA have a brand new studio album out now. We come in peace. There's also a brand new live album by DOA. Welcome to Chinatown DOA Live. Get them at SuddenDeath.com. Part of the sound of Crown Countdown U is provided by The Real Mackenzies. The new album, West Winds, featuring My Luck Is So Bad, is available on iTunes. It's a safety dance in Quebec. The Griffins soar at home, and the Mounties ride to an upset. Crown Countdown U counts down now. Hey everybody, welcome to Crown Countdown U. I'm Ryan Sullivan. This, of course, Andrew Wadden. I know what you're thinking. Hey, those guys got some new haircuts, and they are ugly. Yes, we are. You know what else is ugly? The relationship between a couple juggernauts in Quebec. However, that relationship is always very one-sided, of course, Laval being the champions. And this week, the only thing that was missing when they entered into peps was Lil Wayne and Justin Bieber by their side. We start with the most exciting play in football, ladies and gentlemen, the safety. There were three of them to open this game, but due to the wow factor, we're just going to show one. We don't want to overdo it. Shift to late in the second queue, Laval lining up for a field goal, but it's shanked badly. Antoine Bernot takes it from his own end zone, gives two defenders the shimmy shimmy ya, yeah, and he gone. Takes it all the way to La Maison. That's a 119-yard return. Perno is quite pleased with his efforts. It's no safety. Third cue, the Val starts to roll. Tommy Barassa finds some real estate and busts out for a huge game. The Val move inside the caravan 10. Pascal Lachard loses control of the handoff. Montreal pounce on the pigskin. A massive turnover for the boys in blue, but can they do something with it? No, no, well they can't. Montreal goes two and out, which forces them to punt, and it results in this tragedy for the carry band. Laval with some sweet field position, and they make it work for them. Grenon fires this bullet right into the arms of Felix, Gobert, Lucier. The men in black take the lead. It's now 10 to 9. Under three minutes to go. Montreal deep in its own zone. Cousineau under pressure. Tosses the ball right in Maximilian's hands. The man with the fantastic first name with the thievery. The Coos is choked and he should be as Pascal Lachard makes up for his earlier fumble with this major. They fail on the two point convert, so it remained a one score game. Just a buck 30 left on the clock. Cousineau airs it out for Mikhail Davidson. MD with a massive game, putting Montreal into Laval's territory. So with the ball now on Laval's 20, Cousineau feels the fire, the ball gets knocked loose, and the Rouge et Fours scoop it up, and that would be the ball game. Grenon tosses close to 150 yards, connecting on 14 of 25 passes in the one major. Rasa rushed for a game high 107 yards on 13 attempts. Montreal's Mikhail Davidson led all receivers with 99 yards on four catches. If you were a fan of the punt, well, this game was for you as both teams combined for over a thousand yards of punts on the day. Sherbrooke and the Redmen start things off with Felix Bautier Gagne making McGill look silly in their own barn. Where's this guy going? 
That drive would result in nothing, but Sherbrooke does strike first. Jeremy Doyon rocks, skies one out for Kyle Gagnon, Bissayon, and he is gone. 70 yards to the house. Doyon Rock just kept adding logs to the fires. A few minutes later, he hits Gabriel Goulet. Bright cap of kettles, warm woolen mittens. It's 24-3, Sherbrooke at the break. McGill would make things interesting in the fourth, though. J.P. Paquette on the punt return. He is gone. A 74-yard run back. McGill treading water late in this game. That would be all they really do, though. Samuel Bebo with the pick. And Bebo says bye bye Almost bails on his face, but he keeps his legs churning butter. 92 yards later, he is in the 45, 26 the final for Sherbrooke. They get their first W of the 2013 season. Isaac Maison was the man for the green guys. He ran the ball for 134 yards and a major. JDR with a pretty brutal day actually for numbers in the win, completing less than half his tosses for only 174 yards, two TDs and one INT. For McGill, the dream season hits a bit of a speed bump. They now fall to 500. The bright spot though, Stefan Osman on D, nine tackles, two forced fumbles. The man was a beast. The very or now head for Montreal, while McGill has a date with Concordia. Matthew Burke led the ground attack for Bishops, racking up 115 yards on 18 carries while scoring one major for the Stingers. Michael Harrington put in a good day's work catching 10 passes for 130 yards. So take a glance at the big board in the queue and you will find that Laval is alone at the top with a perfect 4-0 record. The Calgary Dinos have a hurt starting quarterback. Eric Zaleski, he broke his foot, he's done for the year. Manitoba Bisons have a Heck Creighton candidate in Anthony Coombs. The man is simply unreal. This should be a walk in the park for the Bisons, right? Out to beautiful Calgary, Alberta we go. Just a few minutes into the first and Andrew Buckley hooks up with Brett Blasco. 91 yards of ground covered on this one. Blasco goes all the way to the house. We're not even three minutes in yet and Calgary has 100 yards of offense on the board. That stat would be a little foreshadowing. Let's fly ahead to the second, and Andrew Buckley skies went out for Rashawn Simon Eyes. He goes 56 yards to Moneyland. It's the Vancouver College product's first touchdown in the CIS. It's 20 to three for Cowtown, and Calgary not letting off the gas. Buckley hits Dobko for a gain of 35, and that would lead to this. He majors in business, he minors in goal lines. Dr. Goal Line himself, Mercer Timmis, chalks up his seventh TD of the year. Before the half's out, the Bisons would slow the bleeding just a tad. Yance hits Anthony Coons from 21 out. He debates the celebration, realizes he's down by 24. Probably a good choice. Second half, not a better story for Dobie's Tobies. Anthony Coombs loses the handle on their first possession. Calgary recovers it, and it leads to this. Timmis takes the shovel pass from AB and he is gone. It's 40, soon to be 41 to 10. The Bisons weren't done, but the hill to climb was quite high and this would not help. Andrew Buckley goes for a run, looking like a young Dave Dickinson, makes a hook slide, takes a late lick, tack on a few extra yards, and then to cap off the night, paging Dr. Goal Line, you're needed in the end zone. Timmis grabbing his fourth touchdown of the day. This thing is done. Over 1,000 yards of offense through the air in this game. The difference for Manitoba, the drop balls and the penalties. Both teams combined for nearly 300 penalty yards on the day. 181 of those belong to Manitoba. Calgary stays undefeated as they head for Edmonton to dance with the Golden Bears in week five. Over to Griffiths where the hometown Huskies were turning the clock back to 1914. Just a couple of minutes in, Saski up by a safety, Drew Burko fires it to Dexter Jenke for the touchdown. Huskies now up 9-0. Still in the first queue, Burko scrambles out of the pocket, has loads of time, hits Mitch Hillis, the younger brother of Kit, not to be confused with the car from Knight Rider. That's the youngster's first CIS touchdown. The G-Bears would add a field goal to get on the board and then follow it up with this. Ed Ill Nicky gets ill with it. That's a 60 yard major. Shift to the fourth queue and if the game wasn't already over, well, this would make it official. Shane Buchanan with his second major on the day. Burko with just another day at the office, tossing for 373 yards, connecting on 32 of 45 passes. 
plus, of course, those two majors. UBC, 500 now on the year. They waltzed into Regina and tangoed out with a 37-27 win. All right, let's take a look at those Canada West standings. Calgary, yep, they are for real. It is official. They are 4-0 behind the likes of Andrew Buckley. Saskatchewan, 3-1. and Manitoba is 500 along with UBC. And my sleeper is still asleep. Regina, they are 1-3. and All right, back in 2008, the number one song on Ryan Sullivan's iPod was Katy Perry's I Kissed a Girl. However, it was also the last time McMaster lost three games in a season. Def Potastic's boys have absolutely owned Stu Lang's Griffins, not having lost a golf since 2007, probably the last time Ryan had a date. Griffin's got a big boost as OUA second team all-star from last season. Rob Farkasen returned to the lineup and he would have a big day. However, more on that later. Guelph was on the hunt early. Curtis Newton welcomes Josh Vanderweerd to homecoming. JV gets lit up like a Christmas tree. But Mac would be the ones to light up the scoreboard first. The rain pouring down. Jazz Lindsay pulls it back from Parkinson. And whoop! Pigskin on the turf. Mac recovers. That would lead to a field goal. Less than 30 seconds left in the first queue. The bad snap almost gets away from Daniel Ferrero. However, he gets the punt off, but it's a weak one. Mac with some beauty field position. And they make it work for them with a little help too from the Zebras. Mike DeCroce lands it nearby Acton, but somehow he gets called in bounds. Fortunately for the Griffins, Mac could only muster a field goal. The Zebras would make up for that miscue with yet another. Check the middle of your screen. Alex Charette is halfway to Fergus before the ball gets snapped. The entire squad of stripes misses it. Charette knows he got away with one there. However, Mac wouldn't back down. Ferguson over the middle to Vanderweerd. My lord, he gets top daddied by two Guelph defenders, but he manages to hold on to the biscuit. A couple of plays later, Brian Sullivan's favorite receiver, Danny Vanderweerd, caps off the drive. Maybe a slight push off. Nonetheless, the points go on the board. That is Second half now and the wheels start to fall off for Mac Pivot, Marshall Ferguson as he looks sideline, plucked by Taylor Palmer, which leads to this. Jazz Lindsay takes it to the house and now wait for it. Yeah. Didn't see that coming, Jazz. Very next series for Mac. Ferguson. Well, he gets plucked again by Palmer. His second thievery of the day, fourth on the season. And the Griffins make Mac pay for their charity. Ferguson. Waltz is in his first major of the year. Guelph scored twice on both the Palmer's INTs. Mack would add a field goal to cut the Guelph lead to eight. So with under two minutes to go, Mack in Guelph territory. But Ferguson gets picked again. This time, Tristan Dolan with the thievery. However, Guelph would go two and out, leaving Mack with plenty of time to even things up. So down just a converted touchdown. Ferguson goes to work. First, he hits Dolan Brooks. The chains move forward. Ferguson then takes a lick, but tosses up a prayer that Danny Vanderford could only answer. Check out the incredible athletic prowess from the young first year receiver. Very next play, Ferguson finds Tyler Loveday. That's six more for the boys in white, but they still need to convert the two pointer to send things to overtime. And no, sir. Well, finally snaps its losing streak to Mac, escaping with a 24-22 win. Farkasen with a mighty start to his 2013 campaign, rushing for 119 yards on 18 carries, scoring the one major. Jazz Lindsay was solid when he had to be, tossing for 173 yards on 17 of 27 passing. Marshall Ferguson's numbers were good. Those two picks in the third queue proved to be costly for his Marauders. Laurier hosting the Western Mustangs. This should be a blowout, right? Well, first cue, Will Finch gets picked. Felix Odom with the robbery. Momentum Golden Hawks. They would move the pigskin too. James Frackis hits Greg Nyhoff. Nyhoff goes 67 yards before being dropped. It would set up this Frackis QB keep though. Listen to the pageantry. Loving the fireworks. Scary situation for Western as Vancouver College product Garrett Sanvito goes down awkwardly, limps off the field with help. Western would trail 17-12 at the half. 
They would wake up in the second, though. Will Finch finds Adam Sinclair with the pitch. He's gone. Put it on the board. Western takes their first lead of the game, 22-17. They would just keep adding the pepper from there. Finch skies went out for Justin San Vito. That's six. The extra point makes it seven. Then Will the Thrill finds Brian Marshall deep in purple property. That's a first down and then some. Yannick Haru would finish the drive. 45-24, your final from University Stadium in Waterloo, Ontario. Will Finch passed for 423 yards, two majors and two picks. Brian Marshall with over 200 yards receiving the big story for Western though, the unsure status of star running back Garrett Sanvito. The Gales remain unbeaten after handling the GGs with ease. Billy McPhee connecting on 50% of his passes for 305 yards, two touchdowns and one INT. Jesse Andrews led the Queens ground attack rushing for 92 yards on 13 carries while scoring two majors. Gigi's pivot, Aaron Colbon did all he could for his side, tossing for over 250 yards, three touchdowns, while rushing for 81 yards. Twas quite a bit of scoring going down at Carleton University. Jesse Mills throws for 450 yards, three majors as well for the Ravens. Miles Gibbon, what a day for this guy, almost 400 yards through the air. He only missed six of his targets all day, tossed five touchdowns, no picks in the winning effort. Windsor may have won the game, but they lost star quarterback Austin Kennedy to a knee injury. AK was forced to leave in the third queue and did not return. Standings time now, and it remains a log jam at the top. Western holding down that top spot at 5-0, while Queens and Guelph are also unbeaten. If you happen to catch last week's episode, it was the first time in a long time that an AUS team almost cracked our CIS top 10. Very close. They didn't, unfortunately, but the hype is still built. Can Mount Allison and St. Mary's live up to it? The lush green grass at Mount Allison. Jack Creighton hooking up early with Melvin Abankwa. He goes for a nice trot after the grab. Easy points in the red zone, right? Well, not quite that easy. Creighton does find the handle and eventually Matt McGee. It's 11-7, Mount A. Brandon Lay back the other way, hits Matt Rose. He goes for a pickup of 25 yards, Mount A in striking distance. It would lead to this storm ahead by Jordan Botel. Devontae Simpson picks Jack Creighton and takes it back. 57 yards to the house, 29-15, Mount Allison, your final score from Sackville, New Brunswick. Each QB had a rough day at the office. Creighton and Lay each tossing up three picks. X are no longer unbeaten after getting smacked at home by Acadia. Brett Backman had three interceptions for Acadia, including a 64-yard pick six that happened late in the fourth Q. Despite the loss, X still sits on top of the AUS standings. Acadia now joins Mount A and St. Mary's with a one and two record. Again, some fantastic action coming from the mayor. Katy Perry is a legend! Yeah, she's right up there with Hendrix and the Doors and, you know, Elvis and people like that. She is. Crown Produce secures produce locally and from around the world for Canadian retailers. Crown Produce is also proud to secure sponsorship of University Football on Shaw. Crown Produce, supporting Canadian retailers and Canadian amateur football. Whether it's your first home, a refinance, or an investment property, Kia Grant & Associates can find a mortgage solution for you. In association with Barrico Paragon, the work she does for you is free. Find her on Facebook at Kia Grant Mortgages. Now it's time for the three-minute warning with the head coach of the Guelph Griffins, Stu Lang, also known as the one-dollar-a-year coach. Stu, why are you doing this for a buck a year? Well, uh, well thanks, Jim. Um... Uh, I'm fortunate in that uh, I have the means to uh, to do this, but uh, my pleasure comes from seeing the passion and dedication and commitment of my players. Well, you're an aggressive recruiter. The whole program is. How important is it for you to reach out of your territory uh, to build a roster that's competitive in the CIS? Well, obviously we want to win the eights, but more importantly, we want to win the Vainé. So that involves playing teams like Calgary and Laval and some of the great teams uh, outside of Ontario. So it's very critical for us to try to attract the best football players from across Canada. How have you been able to apply your business acumen to what goes on on the field and around the field? I mean, you've got more 
uniform combinations than yeah. Oregon, I think, these days. Well, um, i am always, uh, always been a big believer in best practices, trying to find you know, companies or other teams that do things very well. So as everyone knows, uh, Oregon is something we, uh, we copy. In fact, uh, we just added a, a tempo system, which is a sound system that we're going to have on the sidelines to play music during practice. But uh, in terms of business, uh, the big lesson my dad taught me was to hire people smarter than you and then get out of the way. So I'm fortunate that I have three coordinators that are smarter than me, and my job is not trying to trip them up. Oh, it's funny. I try to do the same thing with this show as well. Uh, yeah. There's an order in the OUA, and Guelph was kind of out of that upper order. Uh, as you've moved up in the standings and in stature, have you tread on any toes? Uh, well, I, I think we are. Um, we had a great year last year. In fact, it was the best record ever in the season, 7-1. and one. But uh, we talk about sustained success here, and, and one year is not sustained. So... Uh, we've got to do this for a couple more years b before we're considered one of the big dogs in the OUA. Yeah, one last question here. What are your thoughts on a national interlock of some sort? Because I know you went out to Saskatchewan at the start of the year last year, and it really set the tempo for the rest of your season. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we had a great time out there. It was great for team bonding. Uh, I may be a little in the minority. Obviously, with Carlton coming in the OUA, we don't play two teams already in our conference. Uh, so uh, what I'd probably like to see is the opportunity to play one or two non or games that don't count, but allow us to play some of the other teams that we may not see ever in a player's career. So uh, I'm sort of taking the middle ground on that. Stu, thanks very much for this. Appreciate your time and best of luck for the rest of the season. Great. Thanks, Jim. And that is your three minute warning. Welcome back to Crown Countdown. You, it's time again for that round table. We welcome back in, of course, the man dressed in black, Jim Mullen, giving him a run for his money with the uh, all black clothing. We have former UBC quarterback, Billy Green. And of course, out in Quebec, we have the lead singer of the Kings of Leon, and he's from Acrofoot.com, <laughs> JP Chouare. Welcome back, JP. Nice to be here with you guys. Yes, absolutely. Good to have you. We'll start things out with opening kickoff. Now, give me a CIS story that needs some publicity. We're going to start things out with Jim Mullen. Well, I'm not sure if it needs publicity, but I think it needs to be talked about. The outstanding defenses in Quebec. Uh, we saw it in display in the Laval-Montreal game. I know a lot of people that wanted to see explosive offense weren't getting it from that game. We warned you last week about that. Uh, but uh, from what we saw in the trenches, there's no team in this country right now, I think, that matches up uh, on the defensive line or the offensive line with what's going on with the guys in blue and the guys in black and or red. You know, I, I, got, I got to go in the same direction as Jim. You know, the, the, the line play in Quebec is interesting. And, and you asked me to talk about uh, one of the guys benefiting from that line play is uh, uh, Carabin running back, Rotrasene, uh, who's been out uh, for a couple of weeks now. Uh, you know, so fifth year guy, he's the, he's the lead rusher for his team. He's been out for a couple of weeks now. And then, you know, we hear he might be coming back uh, for a couple of weeks, maybe, uh, you know, for the last two games of the season. But as of now, he was on the crutches on sideline for that game uh, against Laval. So that's a little bit for Sene. But look at the Carabin, you know, they're up with their third and fourth running back running against Laval for over 100 yards. So really, the line play, as Jim said, you know, is uh, really interesting right now. Covered the queue pretty well. Billy, what do you got? I'm going to talk about the city of Prince George. Uh, last year, Jordan Battelle from Mount Allison burst on the scene, rushing for 1,000 yards. Great year. This year, Brandon Deschamps, also from Prince George. Uh, two of the better running backs, I'd say, ever from that city. Objectionable <laughs> conduct time. Problems with the CIS this week. Start things out with Billy Green. Regina running the ball five times. Uh, as a quarterback, you always like to throw the ball 55, 60 times a game, but you don't like to do it at the expense of only giving your running back five carries. Being that one-dimensional is very detrimental to a team. As you saw, they uh, weren't able to pull out the win this week. They're one in three. Came in shutters leading the league and or the country in passing, which is great for him, but that team, uh, they're not going to be able to be successful unless they establish some sort of running game going forward. 
Jim Mullen. Cayman Shutter will lead the universe in passing <laughs> this year. In this Great race. records. Uh, make uh, conceded safeties worth three. I complained about it in the uh, Canadian Football League. They moved the kickoff back to the 20. Big deal. Uh, we saw it in a couple of games where the offense was taken out of the game by teams conceding a safety, giving up two points. There's two and a half minutes in the middle of it where you have to sit and wait for them to tee up a kickoff. It is non-entertainment. It actually, even though it puts two on the board, it takes three off the board or even seven off the board. It takes the reward away from the defense. Two points is not sacred for a safety. At one point, touchdowns were worth five points. They upped it to six. You can up the safety to three points, and you can take that stupid vision of seeing a kicker run around an end zone like a duck to give up two. I got to go with injuries. Uh, right now in the queue, you know, it's a, a big factor. You know, top teams, Laval lost their star receiver, Matt Norzil, for a long time. Lost uh, their top defensive tackle, John Alexandre Bernier, for the season. Thomas Girard in the, as a DB out for the season. O-lines. Montreal lost three O-lines out of their starting five so far. Their top two running backs. Uh, Sherbrooke lost some players as well. So, you know, what's going on with injuries this year in football? I mean, the guys, are are they overtrained? Are they not protected enough? Should it be time for the O-lines to wear braces on both knees on every down in practice and in game to make sure that this doesn't happen? Right now, you know, injuries is a big factor in the queue, and you don't want to see your teammates and other players get hurt like that. Uh, now, game of the week, game day time. Obviously, we're thinking Carlton Toronto this week. No, Jim? Uh, no, but we are thinking about the OUA. We're thinking about uh, Western and Queens. It's going to be a hornet's nest for Queens to go into. Uh, you got a pair of great quarterbacks in McPhee and Will Finch that are going to go at it. I think this is a game that people had circled on their calendar in the OUA, and uh, I'm expecting a good one. Mr. Billy Green. With the expense of sounding like a homer again, I'm going to go uh, UBC Saskatchewan. Uh, it's in Vancouver. We've seen UBC come out the last four weeks and play everyone very competitively. They've, uh, they're 2-2. Two and two. They've won two close games. Uh, I've been a big SAS supporter going into the season. I think they're a great team. I think the, in the end they, uh, they win the Hardy. But this week we're going to see if uh, UBC, if they're for real. I hope they are. They're going to feed the ball to Deschamps. Burko is probably going to come out and be very prepared, so it's uh, it's going to be a good game, and I'm going to look forward to listening to Jim call it. Strategically, we actually have it's like good versus evil. We have the Saskatchewan <laughs> helmet and the UBC <laughs> right behind you in the shot as well. That game on Shaw TV, by the way, uh, channel 299 on your Shaw dish. Thank you very much plug again, for Bill. You, Jim. There you go, JP. Take us home, buddy. So Billy talking about his alma mater. I'm going to talk about mine. You know, Sherbrooke playing Montreal in Montreal this week. Sherbrooke, you know, been part of the Dunsmore Cup uh, twice in the past three years. And right now, you know, at one and three, it's a make or break game for them. You know, if they lose this one, they might be, they might be off of playoff contention, uh, taking in consideration that they're playing uh, at Laval and hosting Montreal in their past two, three games. So huge game for Sherbrooke. And Montreal, they have something with Sherbrooke. They just can't get over that hum these past couple of years. So that's, uh, that's going to be a big one in the queue. There you go. And thus concludes another edition of the Roundtable. I'd like to thank Jim Mullen, Billy Green in studio, and listening to his iPod and not us, J.P. Schroere <laughs> over in Montreal. Thanks a lot, J.P. Greatly appreciate it, bud. There we go. That yeah. concludes another episode of Crown Countdown U. Now stay tuned right now for the CIS Top 10. Andrew Buckley culls the herd, dropping them to 10. McMaster hangs in at number 9 despite being 2 and 3. Bishops and Jordan Heather at 8 with a bullet. Saskatchewan is stable at 7. Guelph with a win over Mac holds at 6. Calgary looks for real in the C-dub. That gets them 5th. Montreal's loss doesn't cost them. They sit at 4. Queens at number 3 can move up with a win over number 2. The Western Mustangs in London on Saturday. And number one, Laval, who survived the Quebec Civil War. Thanks for watching Crown Countdown U as Countdown has Countdown. Crown Produce secures produce locally and from around the world for Canadian retailers. Crown Produce is also proud to secure sponsorship of University Football on Shaw. Crown Produce, supporting Canadian retailers and Canadian amateur football.